So for this video, I think before every category, if you could do those like really dopey title cards that you're kind of known for. No, 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 those are dope title cards that I'm known for. No, no, I'm pretty sure I meant dopey. You know, like the one that everybody knows you for, all the silly, dumb title cards. Welcome back Deep Review TV viewers, Chris Nichols here and we have another exciting entry level shootout for you today. We're looking at the Canon EOS M50, the Fujifilm X-T200 and the Sony A6100. Now we're coming to you from Pierce Estate Park. This is actually where we tried to do our last shootout video, but we got rained out and chased away. But Jordan and I, were not quitters. When we get knocked down, we get up again. You're never going to keep us down. And so <laughs> we're now here at Pierce Estate Park. and. Uh, it is not beautiful springtime like it was last time, it's winter time. Did you know that birds in Alberta actually migrate for the winter, not because of the cold, but because of the uh, disgusting view? Without further ado, let's get started on our shootout. So to kick things off, our first category is going to be handling. No, like lower. Oh, key frame it properly. Handling, there we go. Now in third place, I'm gonna give it to the Sony a6100 because this camera really hasn't changed its design in any major way since the a6000. And I get it. I mean, that's a super popular camera for Sony. It is a very usable design, but it's minimalistic. It's Spartan, not particularly comfortable to hold. And I just think we should be seeing some major innovations. We have had many, many versions of the a6000 camera and it still keeps looking the same. They don't wanna rock the boat, I get it. The menu systems are still complicated, even though you do have the My Menu system. And the Sony A7 series, their full frame models, those have been getting regular updates, making them more ergonomic, better handling, a little bit nicer to look at. But here we still have the same old design. In second place, we've got what? A Fuji? But Chris, they're always the most attractive cameras. And I will grant that from a distance, this camera does look beautiful. But the X-T200, despite being very light and having fantastic customizable dials, I still cannot help but feel like the camera gives you a very sort of cheap toy-like effect when you're holding it in your hand. Beyond that, I really don't like that we have no AF on button on the back. That was a huge letdown for me personally. But this camera still does handle well, the grip is improved, and overall, it is a very nice intuitive platform platform for people to get started with. I just think that our number one winner did a slightly better job. Now our number one winner, actually, we're gonna give it to the Canon EOS M50. I mean, this camera does feel like a nice quality camera. It's a handsome looking camera. It has by far the best grip of the three bodies. It really comes down to very easy to use menus, a wonderful touchscreen interface. I like that the EVFs apart from the screen a little bit. And overall, I think people are gonna find it very pleasant to use. Next, we are gonna talk about displays. Make it look like it's coming out of my bum. In third place, we've got the Sony a6100 again. First off, in this day and age, a 1.44 million dot EVF is just way too low res. I do actually like the vertically tilting screen, and of course you can do vlog stuff, that's a nice improvement, but overall, Jordan and I still appreciate fully articulating screens just because you get better versatility. Now I know photographers, this might be all they need, but a lot of cameras now are gonna be hybrid cameras for video and photography, and a fully articulating screen just gives you more bang for the buck. In second place, we got the Canon EOS M50, and this is actually my favorite of the EVFs to use, 2.36 million dots, and here we do have a fully articulating screen, and I like that we can adapt this, we can protect the screen when we don't need it, I mean, these are all nice features. It's just over a million dots on the back panel. This is a very usable display system. And our first place winner, it's the Fuji X-T200. Now we've got a very similar EVF to the Canon, it's 2.36 million dot EVF. The real winner here is gonna be this LCD panel. It's fully articulating, it's over 2.7 million dots in resolution, but the real winner here, the 16 by nine aspect ratio. For video, it's just natural. And for photography, it gives us a really nice unobstructed view of our shot, as well as space for the touchscreen interface. It just makes the handling of this camera so much nicer. Okay, Jordan, let's try Image quality. Too much? That's too much. Let's try um, image quality. Perfect. Now before I reveal image quality's third place, I have to say that all these three cameras take very similar images. Image quality differences are probably the least important of the three, but there are some things that we can talk about. So third place, it's the Canon EOS M50. Now let's give the old Canon a break because this is old. This is actually in our first shootout video. It's still sticking around. It's good technology, but it is the oldest of the three sensors, 24 megapixels, does have a fairly slow scan rate. There's some rolling shutter issues, and I do like the JPEG color, but overall, third place is Canon. 
All right, our second place winner, it's gonna be the Sony a6100. Now this is a newer sensor than Canon EOS M50, and that shows when it comes to high ISO quality. However, again, we're talking very minor differences, and it gets very subjective on which one's color you like better. But we still have some rolling shutter issues here. This is still not an amazing advancement. All right, number one, it's the Fuji X-T200. This is an easy win. I mean, we don't have their excellent 26 megapixel sensor here, but compared to the other two, we're still getting a modern sensor, very good ISO performance. And on top of that, we still can't say enough about Fujifilm's JPEG processing, their color, their film simulation modes. And we also get the fastest scan rate on any of the sensors. So the least amount of rolling shutter. So overall, easy win for Fuji. Talking about autofocus, now you're gonna try to keep me in focus? Yeah. Huh? Check out these moves, huh? Never played a day of football in my life, can you believe it? In third place, we got the Fujifilm X-T200, but don't get me wrong, Fujifilm have made huge strides in recent times to improve their AF. The X-T100 that we originally reviewed, it was pretty bad focusing camera. This is so much better. I think if you're doing you know, portraits and some kids sports or pets or whatever family stuff, this is gonna deliver for you. And I think it's just that the other two cameras have a little bit better interface, and this camera is also let down by a fairly short buffer. So if you're shooting quickly or continuously, you're gonna run out of photos sooner than the other two. In second place, it's the Canon EOS M50. And even though this is an older dual pixel AF system, it comes down to a great touchscreen interface. The tracking is very sticky. This was one of the cameras that does with the dual pixel AF follow faces and eyes. You get huge improvements if you move up to something like the Canon EOS M6 Mark II. However, this is an entry level crowd and I think this camera makes it very easy and very intuitive to get shots in focus. All right, number one winner, it's an easy win. It's gonna go to the Sony a6100, of course. And let's just be honest for a second. I mean, Nikon, Canon, Fujifilm have all drastically improved their AF performance in recent times, and it's very effective. But who are they trying to emulate? They're trying to emulate the Sony AF system. I mean, Sony's eye detect and face detect work fantastically. Their cameras track very accurately. The a6100 has their new real-time tracking, deep learning AF technology. I mean, these cameras are intuitive to use and they give you the highest hit rate for shots in focus and there's just nothing else to say about it. The amazing thing with the a6100 being an entry level camera is you basically get the same advanced AF as their pro bodies. And third place is the Canon M50. Now, I do love Canon's dual pixel autofocus, though this is an older version, so it's very accurate, but not terribly fast. But the big drawback here, if we switch this thing to 4K, we've got a huge crop and we lose our dual pixel autofocus. So it's a capable 1080p camera, but the other two are great 4K cameras. In second place, we got the Sony a6100, and here you're getting very usable 4K recording quality on it, and you've got the best autofocus of the three cameras. So if you're shooting sports, wildlife, documentary stuff where you need that reliable autofocus, this would be my first choice. There are still some real downsides though. We've got pretty severe rolling shutter with this, and we don't have a fully articulating screen, just this tilty screen. If you put a microphone accessory or anything like that on the hot shoe, it's gonna block your display. It's not a great design. Number one, I gotta give it to the Fuji X-T200 for video. As Chris mentioned, we get a beautiful 16 by nine flippy screen on there. Perfect for video recording. But honestly, a lot of the time, I find that the audio is more important than the video quality. First of all, you get a three and a half mil mic jack, but also you can use the USB-C port to connect headphones to it and actually monitor your audio while you're shooting. On top of that, we still get beautiful 4K quality and some nice slow-mo recording. This is my top pick if you're looking for a video hybrid device. lenses. In third place, it's gonna be the Sony E-mount system of lenses. Now, this does come with a big caveat. First off, there's lots of third-party support, and Sony do make some excellent, very expensive, but very professional E-mount lenses that you could absolutely put on this camera without adapters. The reason why this is in third place though is that this is really an entry level buyer's guide and for people in the entry level, they want good but affordable lenses. And the fact is, Sony has not really supported that realm very well at all. In second place, we've got the Canon EOS M system of lenses, and this is the exact opposite situation of the Sony system. If you want expensive, high quality lenses, you have to look at maybe getting an adapter and using Canon EF lenses, and there's not much third-party support for this system. However, we are talking about an entry-level video, and Canon has actually absolutely supported the affordable, good quality lenses for users just starting out. This 1545 kit lens, for example, is way better than the Sony's kit lens, they're 16 to 50. You've got excellent small primes, very nice zooms, and they all feel well-made, well-built, and they perform well optically. 
And in first place, Fujifilm continue to dominate in this regard of having the best lenses and the most lenses available. The fact is you can have your cake and eat it too, but let's just address one of the elephants in the room. You don't have a lot of third-party lens support. In fact, you have almost none, but I would argue that that is because there's never been a need for it. It's hard for those guys to come in and compete with a company who makes very affordable zooms, affordable primes like the 35mm f2, kit lenses which are often better than some of the pro lenses the other manufacturers make, and yet you have room to grow when you're ready for professional work. 56mm 1.2 portrait lens, 50 to 140 2.8 zooms, 200mm f2s. I mean, you've got so many options if you get into this lens system. It's conclusion time, and I think the first thing I'm going to say right off the bat, you know, this competition is a lot like kids' sports nowadays. There's no real losers. Any of these systems could work very well for many different applications, and they're very similar to each other. All right, so if you look at our tally, it looks like the Sony system is third place. And there are some issues there. They don't have a lot of great affordable lenses. Their kit lenses aren't amazing. I mean, you know, they're hard to get into. They're not very sexy cameras, I get it. But you have to appreciate that the autofocus capabilities here make these cameras that can handle pretty much any situation. And because of that, I think that's why they're still such amazing sellers. Whether you're doing portraits or kid stuff, family, travel, or more serious stuff like wildlife, the Sony is gonna give you the highest possible success rate for shots in focus, and oftentimes that is such a big deal. In second place, we've got the Canon EOS M50, even though this is such an old camera in comparison, and I think there's a really unique niche for this camera, and it makes a lot of sense. If you're an entry-level photographer that knows that you just want to keep things simple, you're not going to look at buying crazy expensive lenses. You don't want to get into really difficult kinds of photography. You know, you just want something that takes great images, has an easy-to-use interface, is going to make sense when you pick it up, and has a really nice look and feel of quality to it. This camera makes a lot of sense. It's overall affordable, it's capable, it's versatile and it's perfect if you want to keep things simple. And in first place, we've got the Fujifilm X-T200, but this is a very interesting story because when we looked at our last shootout video, it was the X-T100 that won the most categories, but honestly, we could not recommend it because major important things like the video quality in 4K and the autofocus were frankly quite abysmal. But here now, Fujifilm has a well-deserved win because those two very issues have been fixed here. We've got great autofocusing capability, excellent video capabilities, and yet still everything that made the X-T100 such a good camera. Customizability, a sexy body, great kit lenses, very extensive line of lenses that you can grow into. So this time around, I think we can absolutely recommend that the Fujifilm X-T200 is the best of the bunch when it comes to overall capabilities. And if you're looking for a classic photo and video hybrid, this is also the best of the bunch. Hope you guys found that this roundup was useful. Uh, please do leave comments below on what your thoughts are. Check out our Instagram and our Twitter feeds as well. Click that subscribe button above. Please do that for us. And uh, go to dpreview.com. You can see full reviews on all three of these cameras. Check out our other videos where we did talk about the X-T200 and the Sony A6100. Thanks so much for joining us.